Namaskar and welcome back to Aviation Avi. Today we'll be understanding how can we actually travel with pets on board. Even today thousands of people across the world who own pets especially cats and dogs wonder if they can travel with their furry friends. Well, traveling with your pets is very much possible. Today, more and more airlines are making arrangements for passengers to travel with their pets, especially cats and dogs on board. But unfortunately, there is very limited information on how to travel with your pets on the internet. So, here Aviation Avi presents to you a very unique content on why to leave your pets behind when you can travel with them on board. So, let's get started. With this video, we will walk down the following topics. Number one, the regulations on carriage of pets on board. Number two, the requirements of documents and portable shelter for the pet that we are traveling with. Number three, the security requirements to be met. And number four, the role of operator, which may be the airline or the airport operator in the process. To start with, the regulatory requirements. The IATA Life Animal Regulations or the LAR lays down the requirements to be met while traveling with pets on board. In addition to this, some countries and airlines have their own specific requirements for carriage of live animals. In general, small, inoffensive domestic pets such as dogs, cats and birds accompanied by valid health and vaccination certificates are accepted on flights in the cabin or in the cargo hold at the owner's risk, subject to requirements of carriers depending on the regulations of the country of destination. Although the requirements vary from country to country and from operator to operator, let us walk down the most general requirements that are accepted on most flights. The minimum container packaging and handling requirements as published in the IATA Life Animal Regulations must be met. These regulations prescribe the materials to be used, the size and frame of the shelter being used for the animal. The guideline for calculation of dimensions of container, kennel or the shelter being used for the pet we are traveling with is given in IATA Live Animal Regulations. So we will perform a similar calculation Taking an example of a dog, let's say the length of the animal from tip of the nose to or root of the tail is A, B is the height of the animal from ground to the elbow joint, C is width across the shoulders of the animal, D being the natural height of the animal in standing position from the ground to the tip of the ear or the top of the head. So taking these dimensions, the minimum internal container dimensions become length that is A plus half of B, the width becomes C into 2 and D is the height of the container. So dimensions as mentioned in the previous slide are important because as per IATA Live Animal Regulations, each animal in the container must have enough space to turn about easily while standing, stand and sit erect, and to lie down in natural position. The container should be escape proof, leak proof, and of proper size and of non-chewable material and must be well ventilated. As you can see in the image, these kennels that are used have a proper locking system. They are well ventilated and they are made up of non-chewable material. The pets are usually accepted on one-to-one -one basis per container. However, two small pets of the same species and the same owner can share a container if they are between 8 weeks and not weighing over 10 kgs each or when the mother is traveling with her offsprings of age fewer than 4 months. Pets are accepted at owner's risk and the airline is not to be held responsible in event of such pets being refused entry or passage through any country or territory. The owner is required to assume all risks 
of injury sickness or death of pet accepted for carriage a declaration indemnifying the airline is also obtained from the passenger the owner is responsible for compliance with all governmental customs and health requirements including quarantine arrangements at destination a trained dog or a service dog to assist blind or deaf passenger is generally carried free of charge in addition to the normal free baggage allowance only one service dog per flight is generally permitted to sum up the previous slides a typical plastic kennel for a dog looks somewhat like this the back view of the container should look something like this so that it is properly ventilated there must be a food and water container with outside access there must be a spacer bar proper ventilation openings the container must also have mandatory labeling as in the image here the iata live animal label as well as the this side up label to help proper handling of the container moving on to the requirement of documentation number 1 health certificate from a qualified veterinary doctor number 2 letter or certificate from the veterinary doctor stating the animal's fitness for carriage by air number 3 vaccination or immunization record with vaccination date number 4 a declaration indemnifying the airline to the owner or passenger assuming all risks of injury sickness or death of pet accepted for carriage other documents may be required depending on local regulations apart from this it may also be noted that there are only specific type of aircrafts in which pets can be accommodated because of the requirement of oxygen and pressurization in the cabin moving on to the security requirements for carriage of pets by air all animals must be scanned or screened with a handheld metal detector or the hhmd prior to acceptance for carriage by air as baggage or freight the kennel or container must also be passed through x-ray machine to check for any restricted or prohibited items moving on to the most commonly asked question what to feed your pet before flight like in humans a full stomach might be uncomfortable for your pet during travel thus Pets may be fed a light meal and a small drink approximately 2 hours before dispatch and they may also be exercised just before they go into the container. While it is best to refrain from feeding your pet right before the flight, you can continue to give some water right up to the time of travel. It is not an encouraged practice to use sedatives or tranquilizers in animals being transported either in cabin or cargo hold due to the potential for adverse effects during transport now let us start to discuss the role of operator during carriage of pet by air airport personnel have the responsibility for the care of pets and handling of kennels during air travel a number of factors are to be catered to in order to increase the likelihood that the pets arrive healthy at their final destination These factors involve the appropriate care and handling of dogs and kennels and avoiding rough handling which may injure the pet inside. It is also their responsibility to maintain required distance of the pet from other pets while processing them. The kennel or the shelter or the container for the pet must be protected from extreme sunlight and extreme heat under all conditions. in case of emergencies like illness or sickness of the pet and the pet becoming unconscious licensed veterinary doctor must treat the pets it may also be noted that some airline policy prohibits certain aggressive breeds of dogs hybrid dogs or cats short muzzled dogs to be transported by air some such restrictions may be on females with suckling young and unweaned animals Weaned puppies or kittens under 12 weeks pregnant animals are also generally not permitted hope you enjoyed the video do visit our website avianavi.com and like share and subscribe because your support is our motivation you can reach out to us on our linkedin profile the link of which is given in the description this is anvesha pal signing off thank you